folks, today we are throwing one back. We're throwing it back to 2002 and Kev. What film are we throwing back to, my friend? Oh man, 2002. Your boy here was in eighth grade, I think. And uh, we're going back to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man film. The first Spider-Man film ever, right? Yeah. I mean... It, Right? There was nothing before that, was there? No. I, you know, I think that there might have been r- something really low budget and, like, not Wait. not good. You know what I mean? Like, the really I shitty th- costume. I uh, think you're right. Yeah. So, but no but, one counts you know, that, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was, I mean, this was, by all intents and yeah. purposes, it was, this is, yeah. this is the Spider-Man, but the first yeah. one. So yeah. forget, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know, I know exactly what you're you talking about. You know what I mean, us. though. You know what I mean. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. It looked like it had a trash bag on its head. I've seen the images. <laughs> so we'll just say this is the first Wait, Spider-Man film. Listen, ever. I just googled <laughs> first Spider Spider-Man movie, and it says Toby Maguire's 2002 Spider-Man no film. Way. So way. whatever happened before this film. Did- they don't consider a film, so <laughs> well, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> yeah, no, I. But there's, there's like go in the dark. You know what I'm talking about, though. You know what I'm talking about. You saw the same thing I saw. There was yeah, like his eyes are like yeah, yeah. They're really, they're really weird looking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's um, it's a, it's a thing. Go to the dark web. I'm telling you, it's like, like you'll find it. It's yeah. go on YouTube. It'll probably shit. be there too. So we're talking Sam Raimi Spider Man. Um, <laughs> I was super, I was super excited to watch this movie and and the reason being is because like for me it's nostalgic right yes and then i and then i thought going into this thing i'm like well like i i don't know i, I was so excited because i was like I, I love this movie like this movie brings back so many so many memories i remember going to the theaters to see it blah 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 and then i watched the thing and then i realized there was like a lot of parts where um I wasn't really uh it, it didn't it didn't age well like a fine wine it didn't it didn't do that it was a little bitter and some cringy parts that I'd never realized before um that I realized today when watching it again um so I'm kind of curious to see if you guys picked up on any of those um yeah, 100% I a few things to discuss so, thousand percent I picked up on that because um when we yeah when we first get into this film right it's Peter Parker chasing the bus the bus driver is getting in all the fun of the bullying and whatnot but the thing that got me watching peter parker off the get-go is he is one creepy motherfucker like this (laughs) this dude like straight straight up i'm like dude this like if this was a movie now this was the kid who's like stalking the girl who's you know taking pictures with the photograph kind of like 13 reasons why that one dude that was taking pictures of, uh, I forget the main character's name, but like, it was really odd. The way he, you know, interacted with Mary Jane Watson at first, he's just like, smiling, just like, yeah. doesn't know how to respond. And I'm like, this man's supposed to be our superhero. This is our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, and he's just, doesn't know how to be a person. He doesn't know how to interact with anyone. The, you know, I felt bad because the whole monologue in the beginning, you know, he was getting picked on. The bus driver, who's supposed to be an adult, is, like, having fun with the high school kids just driving the bus down the block <laughs> away from him. I'm like, the I way this Toby started. Toby McGuire yeah. was older than the bus driver. Yeah. Dude, this was the <laughs> weirdest. Oh, you guys. Like, yeah, yeah. You guys. Yeah. Like, that's, I mean, that's, that's like, something I wanted to bring apart later. <laughs> but um, for being a high school student. He sure is fucking old, right? Yeah. Like, and you know, him and Mary Jane Watson, all of his friends, James Franco, those guys were in their early twenties. Yes. And like, you, like you, you, you really want us to to believe that you're gonna pass them for high school students? No. Question. I, I don't. I mean, it, even as a kid, I was like, man, he looks like older than <laughs> I would think. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, I, was, I, I know a high school person. You don't look like that. I was in Why sixth grade, and I'm o'clock? like, I'm like, shit. I'm supposed to look like that in three years. I don't think that's <laughs> happening anytime soon. You know. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been in like my a five o'clock shadows. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but like, I was waiting for you to drop the whole like, you know, was it maybe the fact that he's creepy because he was 45 years old, and, you know, a senior in high school. Um, but I don't think it was that. I think he was just. You know, I think the writers gave him this, you know, we're used to in the animated series too when I was younger, 
this fun, witty, you know, scientist of a man who was who also looked older than he was as well in the animated series. But, you know, in the animated, like I said, he was funny, he was witty, he had more confidence in himself. But this version of Spider-Man and Peter Parker, there was no confidence in himself. He was very nerdy. He didn't know how to talk to people. His only friend was, you know, Harry Osborn, who was this rich kid who, like, kind of felt for him. And I don't know why. I still, to this day, don't understand how they became friends. Because, you know, Harry was this rich kid who could have whatever he wants. And Peter was this, you know, he was a smart scientist, but he was a nerdy photographer on the newspaper for the school. And just didn't have any confidence in himself. So, like, those two personalities were just didn't match for me but it's funny you say that ty because you know That's harry didn't have any confidence in himself either true he he didn't believe in who he was yeah he came from a, a family with a lot of money his dad a reputation to live up to um you know i mean it just, he didn't come from the same path as peter parker did but they he vibed with him he he uh they were on the same page together um i think that that's why they were friends yeah um they both felt like they didn't have a place in the world. Uh, they both come from, you know, I mean, shit, Peter's parents were, they were killed when he was a little kid. So he, uh, he's gone through. And like, that's not even brought up in the movie. No. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just kind of like walked over. Yeah. He lives with his aunt and uncle who are really old, by the way. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know if we have aunts or uncles that are that old, but I don't think anybody I know has aunts or uncles that are that old. I'm that's 30 like and I don't have aunts and uncles that old. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's supposed to be in high school. So, yeah. I mean, that, that, that was a little strange too, but, um, let me, let me rewind a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to just going to rewind right to the beginning because oh, yeah. when the first notes of the theme of the beginning of the Spider-Man song started playing when it was the Columbia logo, you know, it, it, I got the chills watching it a few hours ago yeah dude, uh, that's the first thing i have written down that's so get out of my head because yeah dude it yeah. was i remember when i watched in the movie theaters because we always saw was trailers right and then you go sit down and you watch that and yeah. i remember feeling like when i heard that like oh my god this is gonna be like this is gonna be an epic movie it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be big it's gonna sound really good and you know to to that point what does danny elfman do does he just like wake up every day and just Let's say, I'll, you know what? I'm going to scratch my balls and I'm going to use smooth my balls and I'm going to go to, <laughs> I'm going to write the Spider Man theme this morning. Um, and then just come out and just write write all these crazy themes. He does the Batman theme, you know, the Spider Man yeah. theme. He, he does so many things. And um, it, it's amazing. It, it was the music really grabs you from the beginning. You're like, oh my God, this is, this is Spider Man. And like that theme to me is is one of the better themes uh, for superhero stuff that I, I've heard. Uh, it comes right away and he grabs you. You're, you're ready to watch the movie. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was like initial, initial thoughts was like, this still hits me as hard as it did when I watched it, you know, 20, what, almost 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's so crazy, man. That's, that's literally the first thing I have is Elfman's score is uh, I, I put majestic and iconic. Majestic. It is. No, it majestic. Is. Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I feel. See, it's funny because uh, in the ugh, the Whedon version of Justice League, Danny Elfman took over and did that score, and I don't think his score worked for Justice League. And then to revisit Sam Raimi Spider Man, I think Danny Elfman was the perfect choice. Oh yeah, for Spider Man, like he yeah. he nailed the feeling of like it's it, it's weird, but like. It, if, if a composer is able to score something and just from listening to the score, you automatically associate that with like the way the character is, but just with music, I think that he nailed that. So it's, um, it's, 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 it's interesting because I think the, the latest composer that does the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies is, uh, Michael Giacchino, who's doing, uh, funny enough, Batman, Matt, Matt Reeves, <laughs> Batman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my hopes are very high. But at the same time, when I think of like Tom Holland's, you know, homecoming and, and home away from home or whatever the second one was called, um, I can't think of what that's sc- like the way the score is in that. You know, but, what I mean? yeah. but then when I listen to Danny right. Elfman's, I'm like, 
holy shit, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's right. Is the reason why you can't remember is because you you're more enticed by the film than the score. Because for um, me, for me with the you know this Spider Man film for two thousand two, the score had me amped up the entire time, but because there was parts of this film that lacked for me to mm-hmm. be you know you know to be deep into this film. You know, there was lots of things that turned me away, but every time I heard the music, I was ready. I was pumped up. I knew something good was going to happen. I knew there was going to be a fight. I was feeling the, I was feeling the things that Danny Elfman was portraying to us through his music. But in, you know, in Tom Holland's films, right, I loved the film so much that I don't really remember the score because I was so enticed in the story, in what Tom Holland was portraying as Spider-Man. So I think you need to take in consideration that, you know, there are times where you might not remember the score because you're so deep inside this story and this film because of how well it was made. You know, each yeah. each part of a film, it should be, you know, synonymous. You know, the, the score, the acting, the story, it should all flow together. And I feel like once you start to branch away and be able to enjoy parts that are of the score that are better than the film... That's when you know that things aren't the way they should be because you can enjoy the score more than what was going on in the film at that time. Yeah, it's uh, I, I definitely see your 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 point, um, for sure. And I think that there's, and I'm sure we're we're definitely gonna jump into the way this movie might make you feel compared to you know what we got after it. Yeah, um, and I'm even including like Andrew Garfield's movies too. Uh, um, this this is a good topic though. I think Kev, like let's stay let's stay here because this. I do have something to say to that too. So yeah, like talking about score, I mean like score oh, yeah. specifically score because you know, Ty brought you, Ty, you brought up a good point. Kev, like, I feel like you have something to say on it. Um, do you feel like this? Because, you know, Ty is saying if a score is really good, it shouldn't like, even if, if the movie is good, you're not going to remember the score. Right. Because this, because the movie is so good. But if the if the score you know, if the score could be good, but if the movie is shit, then you're gonna remember the score. Yeah. Which, that's Ty. That's what you said, right? I'm, yeah. I'm not. I, yeah, okay. that's, that's a good. Power make place. sure, like, essentially, yeah. is is what you said. Yes. Okay. Kev, how do you feel about that? Um, it, see, I I admire because when when I think of when I think of scores for for films, I think of like the most iconic scores. You know, especially John Williams comes to mind. You know, you're talking about. Richard Donner's Superman and Star Wars, Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones, Jurassic yeah. Park, you know, all that kind of stuff. And and we could even throw in, I know we mentioned it and funny enough, Danny Elfman's score to, to you know, Batman from 1989. Um, if you're able, I, I don't know. I, I think if, if you're able to compose something that you could just play the score and people go, Oh my God, that's Spider-Man. That's Sam. Right. Spider-Man they know right away. Yeah. Like to, to me, I, I guess, I don't know, as like a musician and someone who appreciates that, I, I, that, uh, that blows my mind. If you're able to, to have something that impactful, where if you just hear the music alone, you know exactly what it is. That that's all I mean. I think like, uh, iconic scores. I feel like we don't, we don't get those except I, I will say now I'm like correcting myself. I think, and I don't know who does it or the composer, but the Avengers theme yeah. score um, to me is probably the most iconic thing today as far as movie uh, scores go. See, His name is Alan Sil- Silvestri. So, Alan uh, Silvestri yeah. does that, the Avengers score. So my, okay. my whole take on that, and I know we're going a little off topic, but still. No, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. We have a lot to talk about. The fact that if you want... The films today, right? We have such great stories and, and, you know, great dynamics with these films. But when you look back to, like, the Batman 89 and whatnot, like, the stories were, you know, they were okay. But they weren't super, you know, impactful as what we're getting today. You Mm -hmm. know? So, when you get the, you know, top of the line, you know, fully action. Like, you're getting the comics straight on the big screen. Like, you remember the moments. You're remembering these you know, intense scenes between characters and the score takes a back seat nowadays because people want to see, you know, in a film, you want to, you want to embrace what you're seeing on screen. If I want to listen to a score or, you know, music, I listen to an album 
I don't go to the movies to listen to a score. And yes, do I think the score makes a big impact on scenes? A thousand percent it does, and it's very important. But I think nowadays, with how technology is, I think it takes away from the score because you're looking at these larger-than-life scenes on the big screen that you never thought you'd see before. And that's why when you look at these older films, you remember the score because we didn't have that. You can't have these action scenes reflecting exactly from the comics to the big screen because of where technology was. So gotcha. that's why we can enjoy these scores more. And the Avengers score, the problem with that is like you can say that's a great score, but you hear it at the beginning of every Marvel film. So it doesn't happen during really the scenes. It happens before the, the movie starts. So that's how you remember it. You know. So I yeah. think the problem is, well, it's not a problem, but I think the fact is that we remember these scores from the past is because there's so much going on in the films today that you don't really remember the scores because of all the action happening in these films. Interesting. Yeah. Morgan, let, well, me, what, pose, you... let me pose a different point of view to you then. I, I, I know we're really kind of, we're not even talking about Spider-Man at this point. <laughs> like, this is, uh, but this is, this is, it means a lot to me. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a really big topic because, you know, Kevin and I are musicians a lot yeah. and, 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 you know, this is, this is huge. Um, and, and the movie starts off that way. So let, let me, let me backtrack by saying, you know, the first thing we hear is the score. Yes. We don't even see the title cards. We don't see anything like that. We start hearing the score first, right? So it's kind of like setting you up for how everything feels. And, you know, before you see any action, you're hearing some music and it's getting you pumped for it, right? But let me let me use the example of um, of Justice League, Zack Snyder's Justice League that just came out. Um, I know there's a lot going on. So the scene where Barry Allen is running back in time, um, you know, and, and that the score comes on. And it's doing yeah. the guitar part and it's doing like the whole thing. Um, I've seen scenes before, like where you just have the scene where it's happening without music playing. And it's very weird. And I've actually, you know, I've directed yeah. and put movies together. Like it's really weird when you don't have the music in there. It, the part could be cool as hell, but if you don't have music in there, you're not conveying, you know, you're not conveying the feeling that you're trying to get across. It's, it's just, a, it's just a part. Sure. And then once you start layering in, um, that stuff, that music and, and the melody and all that stuff, it, it, it really starts to change you, how you feel about the scene. It's It could be funny, depending on, like, if someone you put the Seinfeld theme over when Barry Allen's yeah. running, yeah, it's going to sound silly, it's going to sound funny, you're going to laugh, it's going to seem like a joke. You put, the, you know, you put the right context or the right theme, something really emotional, and then you start to feel it, and it makes this, it just elevates it to the next level. Um, so, you know, I... I do think that score has a really important part. No, I do it, think that, that like, um, you know, it, that it's not just because the scene is cool that we're going to forget about a score. Just like if we, if a score is really good, we're going to remember that. And it's going to be, you know, whether the scene is good or not, I think, I think it just, it leaves a really lasting impression on that, you no, know, on how sure. we feel about it. So, so I agree and I disagree. And nobody's good. Or, nobody's wrong or right. No, it's just, I, no. Yeah, it's true. But yeah. for, for me, you know, the score has the score has to be there for for, for a scene to, to make its impact, but yeah. with what we have today is that it takes a back seat because when I watched you know Barry Allen you know rewind time and you know save the world and Justice League from you know the demise that was going to happen with the mother boxes you know the score kind of took a back seat because of what was going on and what I was witnessing in that scene. And yes, this, the score is a thousand percent important for you to, to set the mood, to tell you what's going on. But I don't really remember what the music was. I do a little bit, but what I was in, you know, indulging in and was sucked in by was just yeah. witnessing him just like slowly bringing back time and everything falling behind him and the, and the things that followed up from there. So yeah. that's so that's for me the 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 problem with you know movies and their scores today is the fact that there's so much visuals that happen that yes the score the score a thousand percent needs to be there because if without the right score like you said Marcus it doesn't work but I think because of that I think people take a, you know take advantage of how it's made and they just enjoy the visual and not the whole the whole scene itself which is interesting because I feel like if you if you were to take some of those scenes and then remove the music yeah, entirely, it would be weird. You'd be like, what the hell? It's just so while crazy the flash how much back in like, time. the music impacts it us does. as we're yeah. as, as a viewer, as, as watching it. And it, and it makes you like, 
obviously you see what's going on and, and, and that makes you feel a certain way. And then they're able to convey that in an, in an instrumental form and then combining the two. You're yeah. Just like, and to, um, and, and to point like the beginning of the, the, the Spider-Man film, like that theme song got me amped. And I remember oh, every, oh, yeah. I remember every oh, bit yeah. of it, you know, I remember yeah, every yeah. bit of it. I remember how I felt when I first watched the movie and you know, it's, to me, I'm just trying to compare how things were then and now. And yeah. if you, if you yeah. compare, if I took myself now and most of the Marvel films I've watched now, I don't really remember how the intro went unless it was one of the films with that Avengers song to it, you know, because I was more, you know, indulged in what was going on than I was with the actual movie as a whole with the score. Gotcha. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that was, that was a, that was a nice that, little, that was a nice yeah. little, um, side topic yeah. right there yeah that was yeah. good yeah. um bringing this back to on topic you know when we first see mary jane <laughs> did any of you guys have a crush on her when when the movie came out yes when i was when i was a kid yes now oh no. entirely yeah my wife my wife's looking at me right now it's okay uh, um let's uh sorry i'm sorry i'm so sorry uh, laura it's not, uh, but i mean uh, this was a long time ago. this is when we were kids uh, yeah it was in eighth grade <laughs> or how about the grade. fact that it was in eighth grade when you get uh, you don't have power. to answer you don't have to answer kev it's okay uh but i will i will say that i did and um you know <laughs> me being the age that i am now uh yeah. i definitely felt some kind of way uh watching it about three hours ago well how about how about the <laughs> fact that uh that when you get superpowers you just fall asleep on the floor and the next morning everything's okay dude that's what i was gonna say dude like <laughs> that's how it is do you man. remember do you remember like when that's before before when he was like starting to pass out um he didn't have any muscles at all yeah and he was just kind of like really scrawny and then the next morning he wakes up and he's like ripped and he has all these muscles and how about norman like, norman he's just like wakes up and he's they're like your assistant's dead and he's like oh we're just sleeping on the floor what happened? Yeah, <laughs> that's. I didn't even realize that they were both asleep on the floor. Yeah, they on the floor. They were both on the floor sleeping. Yeah, they were both on the floor. They were both on the floor, which is really interesting, right? It's almost like a Batman Joker thing. It's like because there, there's so much arch nemesis in the yes. comics, like Spider Man and Green Goblin. You totally. know, like there's so much. The there's very similar to each other, right? So, totally. These guys are were very similar too. They got their powers from some outside source it wasn't something yep. they were born with um yep. you know they both passed out they both woke up it was like you know sam Raimi was trying to get us to feel like yes. they were the same people that just gone on two different paths which is a line the green goblin says later on in the film yep says we are the same person we just took two different paths yep. yes so good and can interesting we, can we Dude. can we talk about norman osborne's <laughs> whole character arc because for me that was one of the best parts of this film because, oh, yeah. you know, we spoke about, you know, Marcus last, last week we spoke about Fantastic Four and, you know, Dr. Doom's awful mm -hmm. arc that was there. But for this film, you know, I, <laughs> I felt for, <laughs> it was awful, but I, I felt awful. for Norman Osborn in this film because yeah. you have this guy who, you know, put his heart and soul into his company and was about to get everything ripped from him. By the yeah. military, you know, and he did what he felt he needed to do to save his company, which resulted in the aggression from, you know, the the superpower, the super enhancers, you know, it resulted to the like multiple pers multiple personalities that developed because this new character developed within him because of these these this, I guess, not pills, but vapors. But, yeah. you know, he ended up, you know, doing that. And put himself in that position, and he ended up losing his company anyway, and that made me feel for this man. And I don't know how yeah. you felt, but like for me, like that character arc, like I felt bad for Norman Osborn, and I understood why he went through, you know, the things he did to become a villain. Dude, I mean, absolutely. I don't, I don't think he's a bad guy at all. Uh, it made me. I, I have one of my notes is like, I feel bad that he turned evil because yeah. he, he he's he was just trying to I mean he he seemed like a good guy before, uh just as just a dad trying to you know take care of his son, uh bring him to bring him to school and his son was like ah being a teenager and you know just giving him a hard time, um but that seemed like the the worst of his of his problems and um you know then it then it turned real bad and now he's all fucked up and it, it sucks yeah so you know Kev I, I'm sure you have a lot to say about that. Actually, one of the notes I had was uh, was how much I loved Norman's and uh, Peter's relationship, yes. and I thought it was very interesting how um, it was almost a uh, 
uh, father son relationship, even mm-hmm. though Norman had Harry, yeah. but Harry wasn't really a son to Norman. I mean, it was, yeah. was just kind of literally like push him to the side multiple yes. times in the movie. I noticed like literally, <laughs> yeah, like literally pushed his ass to the side. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I love that, that relationship between the two of them. And, and um, there was also, I think there was a line in the beginning of the film where they're dropped off at the museum. And uh, I think, uh, it's it's very it's very subtle and not a huge deal, but I was like, oh okay, I noticed that. Was that after you know Norman uh, was talking to Peter and Peter was like, hey, like I read your uh, your article and Norman was like, oh you understood it and blah 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 and it goes on from there and then Norman like lights up like the Fourth of July yeah. um, and wishes that Peter was his own son and then I think Norman says something about like we'll see each other again. Yeah, he does. Or yeah. or I hope to see each other again or something like that. You know, and of course I'm like, oh, you will, but just uh, <laughs> in tights, um, and uh, like little things like that. Like I've noticed rewatching it that I never noticed probably when right. I initially watched it back yeah. in 2002. Little um, seeds, little seeds like, that are planted. Yeah, little, yeah, little things that like Sam Raimi did that I was like, oh, oh, okay, like that that was pretty clever. I like that he, I like how he did that. Um, the the. I kind of want to go into something else, but I I wanted to bring up to you guys uh, while we're talking about, uh, you know, Willem Dafoe, you know, what what are your thoughts on the the casting of him and his portrayal of Norman Osborn? Dude, literally, man, I'm so fucking happy you brought that up because that was my next thing is like, oh, cool. You know, Willem Dafoe, right? Let's talk about him. Like Mm -hmm. his little evil glances, his expressions, his mean looks like they, he was so good at just giving giving a subtle glance and like you know he was a bad person yeah um, oh yeah like or like you know well after he turned into to goblin you know like that like he would he would do these things right and just i don't know if you guys knew this but uh i read recently that william defoe they actually put like perfect dentures in for his teeth yes. for when he played the part yep. of norman and you know when he played the part of goblin they took it out and yep. just showed his regular teeth so I can make his regular yeah. teeth, like, you know, he's got like a little bit of gap, a little bit like yeah, some yeah, of his yeah. teeth are a little yeah. kind of crooked a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, he, they, they tried to show the difference in that way. And I didn't ever knew that. Um, I, knew I didn't even either. see it when I was a kid. Yeah. So oh that, that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I didn't, I, I, I didn't know that as a kid, but I read that recently that that was the thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that, that's cool. Right. Just another little extra, extra sort of like tidbit of uh, how they try to make him be be different and all that stuff yeah um but yeah you know he's he's awesome william defoe is sick he's he's such a good actor yeah and you know i love his voice that he he does his voice is like his voice is meant to be a villain it is. Uh, his his normal speaking voice is just meant to be a villain and, yeah. I, and um I we re- may we may or may not see him very soon um i feel like we're gonna see him very soon but i'm, <laughs> I'm right. pretty pretty excited about that yeah that's right that's right <laughs> Yeah, and I really enjoyed him because the, the one scene that sticks out to me is when he's talking to himself as Green Goblin and Norman in the mirror, oh, and he's yeah. he's flipping back and forth between the Green Goblin persona and himself, and that yeah. I think that's a nod to himself as an actor because you know he's literally speaking to himself, but he's taking on different personalities at the same time and having a conversation, and yeah. it felt so real and so personal because like. When you see, I know this is in the in, way in the future, but when Spider Man and Green Goblin are fighting in the warehouse, and you know Green Goblin sitting down, and Spider Man beats the crap out of him at this point, and he, you know, the Norman Osborn side comes out, and he's like, "Peter, please, like, stop!" Like, I, I fell for that as a kid. Like as a kid, I was like, "Oh shit!" Like maybe this is actually him. You know, this is him trying to fight the demons of the Green Goblin. But it wasn't, you know, from what we've seen. But that well, it one could scene, have it could have been. Ty. It could have. It could have. I, I feel like, I because you know, and oh, by the way, that was like the end scene. Yeah, that was like the end final battle. But I watching it a little while ago, I feel like he was trying to fight it and he was trying to come out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but yeah, he just got he got taken over again. Um, he he can't fight it. He can only fight it for so long. Yeah. I just, uh, Kev, I, I would like to know how you feel about that because that's like. You know, is it one way or the other? 
like how did you feel about that part which part oh the part at the end well yeah just, i know we skipped oh. ahead real, well, really no, far no. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden we're like <laughs> it's over you're no uh, no it's not over it's not over your idea uh, of of norman osborn and and green goblin and you know Willem Dafoe taking on both both personalities. Oh, I, I think the way that he handled the split personality was incredible, and it's I'm so glad that you brought up that scene where he is in the mirror and uh, it's yeah. his face is like constantly changing. I mean, his yeah. Marcus, I know you already said it, but his facial expressions. Why this man wasn't cast as the Joker in his entire you know career is mind blowing. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had to say, it. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. It was, no, yeah. It, Someone had to bring it up at some point, and I'm, I brought it up. Um, but anywho, uh, is he too I, old to do it now? No. What's that? Is he, is he too uh, old to do it now? No. Dude, that could be a whole episode in itself, man. Because um, <laughs> I have some theories on that. So I, I think it really. Willem Dafoe is is a brilliant actor. Yes. If if you watch any of his other films, and this film just showcases, it, it's just it just it, you could just add it to the list of of everything that he's done. His whole filmography. Uh, the man is a brilliant actor, and I think the way that he handled, like I said, the split personality um, is brilliant. I will say one thing, though, is that with someone like Willem Dafoe, who's able to contort his face in such a way, in such a manner, why the fuck would you put a helmet over his Bro. head Dumb. and not show any of those expressions that he has? Dumb, man. I know. That to me was really now. I don't know if uh, Marcus, I, I don't, I, we may have talked about it before, Ty. I don't know if you had seen the footage. There was apparently test footage that had been released on YouTube, I don't know when, of what they were going to do for Willem Dafoe. So they weren't going to put him in this Power Ranger helmet, they were going to actually have him <laughs> have this like, I, I don't know, it was almost like prosthetics on his face, but it was prosthetics that were also like animatronic at the same yeah. time it was really creepy and mind-blowing if you've never it was. seen it i would look it up and it's it's like why i don't know and, and knowing the, the the type of director sam raimi is and coming from a horror background a horror comedy background <sighs> dude seriously um, it just seems like i'm surprised he didn't go yes that's what i want for green goblin instead yeah. of i feel like there was some studio you know, it's, it, they wanted to sell toys. That was a very easy way to sell toys. We're sure. going to give, you know, somebody that, that's in yeah. this like plastic out, out form or out form, Jesus, <laughs> uh, uniform, um, <laughs> you know, compared to something that's going to scare the shit out of you um, as yeah. a kid. And but yeah. like in the comics, Green Goblin is inherently very scary looking. Yeah. And like, you know, yes. he would be terrifying to look at. And, you know, God, if they would have just pulled the trigger on it, you know, but uh, I mean, I, they wanted to sell toys and movies and, and all that stuff. And, you know, it's what it's meant for kids and, you know, what are you going to do at that point? But yeah, if you wanted to be really comic accurate, yeah, he would have been terrifying to look at. Now, um, I, but I, I don't hated know. His outfit. Hated overall, it. overall, Willem Dafoe was probably, Probably the, the strongest yes, in this film. Easily, you know what? I, you know, yeah, I, I, sure. I definitely say, hands down, he's probably the strongest. Such a good actor. Did you oh, guys yeah. know that uh, Joe Maganello was Flash Thompson? I did, and he's I such a dick too in that movie. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna bring that up too. Um, he's such an asshole. Speaking about people who look like super old and in high school, like, <laughs> like dude, what? he looks. He looks like he's ready for to graduate college. Yeah, man, he does. <laughs> Dude, yeah. He looks like he's uh, already in the workforce, man. He already, he's he looks like he's about to be Deathstroke in this freaking film. Uh, yeah, man. It, it's so funny because they show scenes, you know, like when he goes up to Peter at his locker and is trying to bully him. You see the kids around them, and they look like they're in high school. Yes. They're casted appropriately, but <laughs> these people are not. And you're like, yeah. oh my god, are these teachers fighting? Like you know, like these teachers that are in their mid. 20s early 30s are you know he hasn't shaved since this morning so i can see his five o'clock shadow um, Dude, i couldn't get over because like even in the, in, the, in the in the wrestling ring in the wrestling scene bruce yeah. campbell's the ring announcer which as a kid i, I had it. no clue you know macho oh, yeah. man randy savage was you know bonesaw mcgraw bonesaw. like 
Bonesaw. Like, he, he's literally Randy Savage as Bonesaw. Like, oh, yeah. you know, and as a kid, it just went so over my head about who these actors were or or these wrestlers were. And just watching back, I'm like, is this Randy Savage? I'm like, what am totally. I watching? And I look through a double take. I'm like, that's Bruce Campbell as the, as the ring announcer. Oh, yeah, dude. And a nice you know, little Easter egg from Sam Raimi. Oh, yeah. yeah from like Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Evil yeah, Dead, awesome. yeah. And the other thing is, you know, I'm going to give nod to, you know, J.K. Simmons. Because, man, as, you know, Jonah Jameson. Mm-hmm. He's the best. F- fucking fantastic. The best. Oh, Easily the best. He, you know, I best. was laughing my ass off. When he told Peter Parker that he was going to give him, uh, what was it, a Christmas meat? He's like, yeah, I can't give you much. I'll give you a Christmas meat. And I'm like, a meat. what the hell? I'm like, what the hell is a Christmas meat. meat? I'm like, what's a Christmas meat? He's I'm- such an asshole in that movie. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> talk about brilliant casting. I take I take it back. Sorry. like I'm I think he stole the show. The and he honestly, did. for me, I think he was, I mean, he he didn't have like as much screen time, obviously, as Norman Osborn did. No. But, um, you know, he... He was so funny because he, you know, he cuts people off in the middle of their sentences yeah. and he just like, you know what? Get out. Shut up. Get out. You know, like uh, right in the middle of it. And like that's I was laughing so hard because it's just so perfect. And just I, I could see the comic book bubbles, yes. you know, like the speech bubbles. Like, like when I was reading it as a kid, I could see it. And, and it was just it was so perfect. And he was just perfectly casted. I saw it Dude, in, the, when, in the animated series, too. Like that was the oh, Jonah yeah. Jameson I saw. And, you know, he's like. I'll give you 200 for these photos. No? All right, just leave. And he goes, leave. Come back. I'll give you 300 for these photos, and that's it. Yeah. Just put this in the first page right now. Replace it right now. $300. That's what you'll get. Go away. Like, it was just, it was just so, it was so him. Especially for, yeah. you know, as a kid growing up with the animated Spider-Man series and seeing uh-huh. that aggressive, you know, sarcastic, you know, asshole of a, of a news, you know, newsroom yeah. head. It oh, just yeah. worked so perfect. And I, he made... You know, J- J.K. Simmons made Jonah Jameson perfect in that film, and oh, it was, yeah. his delivery is so good. One yes. of my favorite lines I was laughing at today was, uh, I think Peter says something to him like, "Well, do you trust anybody?" And he's like, well, "I trust my barber." Yeah, and he has like, the <laughs> shittiest <laughs> haircut, but his delivery <laughs> is so quick, yeah. and he's so committed to every line that he says. Yeah, yeah. I just I, even today I still laugh at. Just uh, every almost every line that 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 he delivers, Dude. he he's brilliant in that in that role. And even Spider Man saves him at that point, and he still hates him. Spider Man and Green Goblin are teaming up to go against, and, he, and he's like, he literally just <laughs> saved your ass, and you're still throwing <laughs> Spider Man under the bus. Literally talking shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had I had J.K. Simmons written down. I just said J.K. Simmons perfection. That was my only <laughs> note. That's and all then the, you need the, to know. the best thing is, you know, Peter Parker says like, "What you're doing is slender." He's like, "It's not slender. It's libel." But yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's like, he's just <laughs> like, he's like, he's still doing the same thing, but like he corrects him, but he knows what he's doing. You know? Oh yeah. It's not slender. It's libel. You know? Whatever. So same good. thing. So hey, good. I'm gonna I'm gonna slip you guys a question right now. Oh yeah. Um. So. You know when after the wrestling match, when Peter goes to collect his money, and you know the guy was being an asshole to him, and was like, "Well, I told you, you know, three grand for three minutes, and you pinned him in two, you know, so I'm yeah. not going to give you the full the full money and all that stuff." And you know, uh, he was like, "Well, but you said three, and he was like, "Well, I missed the part where that was my problem," mm-hmm. and then so he has to walk away with his head down. He's walking away, and then all of a sudden the robber comes through goes and robs the dude for all his money for the night and starts to run down the hallway. And Peter decides, you know, I'm going to let him go because this guy was a dickhead. I'm just going to, I'm going to let him go. Yeah. You know, there isn't, there's no, no skin off my back. This, this guy just screwed me. I'm going to let him go without knowing what would happen next, obviously. But yeah. would you guys have let him go past you after what just happened to you and be honest? I would not. I don't think so. I, I I would let him go. I mean, I'm just saying I would. I would let him keep going. You know what? Fuck you, bro. You just screwed me. I'm going to let you walk right out of here. Uh, he wasn't going to try to hurt me. Because none of us would know what's going to happen next. No, we that's wouldn't true. know like, any of I, that. We you know, would just we would just want revenge on the guy. And you know what? Fuck you, man. You know, like, go ahead, man. You, you go right on ahead. You walk right in this elevator. I don't know. Because at the same time. I would be thinking, you know, even though this guy just fucked me, like, let me take the high road and say, fuck you. You know, you might be an asshole, but I know I do the right thing. And, you know, I just, 
I, I don't. It's tough. See, yeah, it is tough. But I just, you know, I would <laughs> personally, I would say, you know, as much as I would want to get revenge and let the same thing happen, I feel like me taking the high road and saying "fuck you," I just helped you out and you were an asshole. Like "fuck you," and then yeah. leave. I feel like that to me would be more impactful than just letting that guy leave. You're a good guy, Ty. You're a good you're guy. You're a good Ty. guy, dude. Uh, Kev, I know you're thinking about it. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's hard. I think it's I, hard. I think I'd let the guy go in the elevator. Yeah. I think I would definitely <laughs> let him go. <laughs> as long as as long as I knew like he wasn't gonna do anything to my uncle Ben. But you wouldn't. I know, you but yeah, know. see, we don't we don't uh, know that. That's know. not that's not part of the equation. Yeah. Uh yeah, I don't know. Like that like I, I have to admit, like, there's some cringy lines Tobin Wire says in this film, but I have to say that when he was like, I missed the part where that was my problem, I was like yeah. Good for you, yes, Tobes. I, no, that I was agree. good. I agree with that. That was like you, perfect. Man. Fuck yeah. that. That guy. was perfect. Fuck you. Right to your face. But, yeah. But if you think about it, like come full circle, moments before that, you know, yeah, his, really uncle, his, fuck Peter his, uncle, his uncle said, you know, with, you know, great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And with his great power, he didn't, he was not responsible. And look what happened. You know, I feel like that comes full <sighs> circle. I know. And, it's tough, man. And it's what, it's what stays with him to this day. Because he didn't take responsibility, and look what happened. And now he knows he has to take responsibility because you know what he does or doesn't do will affect people's lives because he yeah. has those powers. That guy was such a cock, though. He was. I know he oh. was <laughs> such a cock, dude. I I, I really hated him. That and, guy was uh, such. He was such like a. I don't know, just like a like a class A piece of shit. But let's be know? real. Peter could easily <laughs> taken that money too. Well, who was that guy going to stop him if he was just like, thanks for the money. Come fight me. Knock him out. See you later. Yeah. Thanks for the cash. That's that's borderline like, but I mean, you'd have to be a straight villain at that point to start doing that stuff. Like, You can be a dick yeah. to do that. You know what I mean? You well, like, you know, I then then that, that, that comes to answer, the, you know, bring the question up. Are you a dick or are you a villain True. <laughs> yeah. to do that kind of stuff? That's a pretty you have that move. kind of power and you know Listen. nobody is going to stop you. How That's very bad. villainous of you to how know, like, like, I'm just going to bully this person and just because I can. How bad yeah. do you want to impress Mary Jane Watson with your brand new BMW, <laughs> all right? That's all it comes down to. Do you want to impress her that bad? You take the money from the guy with your take powers. The money. You know, I don't know. That's the only reason he's fighting in a, in a, in a ring is to make, make money to buy a car, you know? So his, his intentions were wrong from the get-go. So, yeah. you know... No sympathy there, but if you're that, you know, you know, if you're that sure that you wanted to buy this car and make the money, take the money yourself. You got the powers. What's this guy gonna throw a punch at you? You have spidey senses. You dodge it. You got super power. You got super strength. Knock his ass out. And you take the money. You, you get the car. Yeah, that's it. It's quite the quite the dilemma right there. I know. That's why I wanted to pose that question to you guys. Um, yeah. Very interesting point of view. Uh, are you gonna do the right thing or the wrong thing? But you don't know that it's the wrong thing yet. Yeah. Well, I guess, I mean, either way, it's the right or wrong thing, right? Whether or not he's being an asshole to you or not, you should, you can still stop this person from robbing this man. Yeah. Or, or like, or just let it happen because he fucked you and because he's an asshole. Well, it's hard, man. Me? It's well, hard. I don't, I don't know that I've grown up enough yet where I could be like, well, yeah, you know, I'm going to stop do? this guy. I would be like, <laughs> yeah. you know what? you fucking deserve this what would yeah, superman like, do superman. yeah let me hold the door for you bud you know as he's running towards me by the way can I, yeah I, hold that wait, elevator real quick wait. yeah you just get on there yeah. can i bring something up real quick which which i think comes full circle with today in in one line with uh aunt may right she tells peter parker you're not superman which is or you know it's just direct direct correlation with dc if yes. that was today Marvel would never say that. Like you will never hear a reference nowadays of no, a DC of a DC you hero. Do. But just yeah. think, just think of how bad Mar a spot Marvel was in back then. You would never, you know, they what were they gonna say? Don't be, you know, you're not Captain America because people are like who's Captain America? They what had to, they had to reference DC characters sure. in these superhero films because that was what was known. How sure. wild is that to look back and be like crazy. Marvel? You know. In their in their script said you can't be Superman, who is the total opposite of what they you know what they are. Yeah, instead of saying Iron Man or or Captain America, 
who is now like the biggest heroes ever yes. of all time. Yes. But you know, obviously, you know, when Peter Parker was trying his, his powers for the first time, he was trying to shoot Web. He said Shazam. Yes. And that yes, was a nice little Easter egg drop. Uh, yes, up, up, and that's that's up, up, up and away. That's two times. Up, up and away. Up, up and away. It was a Superman. <laughs> yeah. That's that's multiple times they mentioned DC characters. You're right. That's so fucking crazy to think about. Because, I, I mean, I noticed those lines, and now that you're, like, bringing them up, I'm like, wow, like, you're right. I mean, that's – yeah, who else are you going to compare it to at the time? It's 2002. Not Iron know? Man. Like, not Captain America, you know. Hulk, Hulk, Hulk was probably – and the Fantastic Four were the, and the X-Men, you know, were the biggest things for, for Marvel back then. But you weren't comparing sure. to them. You know, who else no. would you compare it to back then? Superman. The biggest exactly. hero on the planet. And it's wild that, you know, the competitor would use his name in their film. That's, uh, it, it's so crazy, man. You're right. Like, they would absolutely not do that today. No. And, and, and simply because what, what Marvel has done as far as cinematically, you know, there's people that don't read comics who now know who Iron yes. Man and Captain America are. Um, so it, it is interesting. It's just a sign of the times. I mean, who else are you going to compare it to, but probably the most well-known superhero ever yeah. Superman. Um, so yeah, it's, it's so, it's so crazy. I, I heard that line in the movie and I was like, Oh, that was funny. But then when you're bringing it up and I'm like, Holy shit, like that is, that would never happen today. Do you guys think of- that Superman is still the biggest character of all time yes. or is Iron Man now? No. Because because of how much, because how much people have invested in their lives to Robert Downey Jr. being Iron Man? Yeah, see, that, that's a, it's a very good question. I, I, I still think if I'm thinking like uh, most recognizable, yeah, I think has to be Superman. Yeah, sure. sure. I mean, uh, the the symbol alone. Uh, yeah, but I the think S. the character it's an S. Yeah, yeah. The S, um, you know, like, like that's Superman. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I I get what you're saying, and I know the, the MCU and them they they have gone to you know they, they have made some of these characters like Ant Man <laughs> popular names. You know what I mean? But like, I have we to cried say, when it when Iron Man died. That's that's like, what I mean. Yeah. I cried like somebody in my own family died. Like I dude. cried. I still cry, dude. I watched yeah. Endgame okay. uh, like five days ago, and I cried again. Yeah, I cry okay. every single fucking time he dies. That's okay. I cry. It sucks. I cry yeah. in Infinity War when Peter. Dude, disappears. that's rough, man. That fu- that, oh. that scene is rough. I don't even want to talk, bro. Yeah, I don't even want to talk about it because that I'm gonna start. I'm gonna cry on the cast. <laughs> uh, but, That'll uh, be it first. We can do it. I, hey, yeah. speaking of, speaking of crying though, in this movie, um, when Peter's crying in his room about you know because his uncle Ben just died. And, you know, after he, he just graduated and Aunt May comes in and, you know, he's just staring at the, the camera and he's just crying. That got me a little bit yeah. earlier. And, like, as old as I am now, you know, that got me. And it got me when I watched it in the movie theater. It got me now. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that was a pretty uh, – I'm glad you brought that up. I, I thought the, the, the scene where, where Uncle Ben's dying was still pretty impactful. I will say – this might sound mean, but whatever – um, hey, dude. Toby Toby Maguire's cry face is just awful. That's, it's that's ugly, an, huh? That's it's an ugly. So ugly. That's an yeah. ugly face, right? There. Some people have ugly cry faces, yeah. and yeah. some people have like you know <laughs> you you feel for them cry faces, and his was ugly. I felt for him because his face was so ugly during that part. I feel like he's um, an over he's an overachiever. He's an overactor. Yeah, <laughs> like that was that was a gross that was a gross face that he did. Somebody um, must have been grabbing his balls as tight as they could, and he was just like. <laughs> Speaking of that, smooth my balls over now. Nah, nah, we're, not, we're not sponsored by them. We're not sponsored. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, that would have been balls. a perfect spot. Uh, but yeah, yeah speaking gross. of which, yeah. my balls are a little edgy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, check this shit out. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a gross face. It's a gross face. Yeah. Um, I, I, do, I, I, oh. I do have one thing that I would like to say about, you know, the film with Spider Man. Because in this film, we actually had the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man with the yes, little acts yeah. of kindness that he would yes. do going through this city and how he interacted with New York. And you see it on the bridge when he's trying to save Mary Jane and that like 
uh, what was it? The the well, tram, like the, the tram, tram of people. Yeah. yeah, like all the of New of York kids. was you know throwing things at Green Goblin. Like to me, like that was the Spider-Man that I grew up with, especially with the animated series. Like that friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, which you know, in nowadays in the MCU, we don't really have that the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And so I glad miss, you're bringing this up. I miss that. Like that's for me. Yeah. That's what Spider-Man is. He is the New York savior going around, whether it's saving a cat from a tree or you know right. doing the big, you know, saving the big heist. Like that to me is like him grounded in New York doing what he does. And I and I yes. miss that. I'm so glad you're bringing this up, dude. Um, because I was just gonna say, I know that you know we've been shitting on a few things and making jokes, and and it's been funny. And I think I think you know it it deserves it in a way because it's just you know some of the things we we have to point out but i'm so happy you're bringing this up because i was like all right i gotta say some positives about this and i think the main positive for, for me and i think ty it sounds like you're you're on the same boat is that i miss the charm yes that the sam raimi movies with the exception of the third uh have have brought and I feel as if, as as much as I love Tom Holland portraying the Peter Parker character, I feel as if those movies are so reliant on what what happens in the rest of the MCU um, that I miss the Spider Man in New York facing a villain story. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I I want that back, and I feel like there's too much shit that's going on in the MCU to where. We're, we're not having that. And, and, and from what, you know, the, the rumors that we keep hearing about this next Spider-Man film as, as, as cool and as, as amazing, no pun intended, that it sounds <laughs> uh, at the same time, I miss, I miss that story of just Peter in New York. You know, we're not Iron Man. Isn't making an appearance or the incredible Hulk isn't making an appearance and it's just Spider-Man and it's just his story with his supporting cast facing one of his iconic villains because i always i always said that i feel like spider-man could always stand alone yes. he's strong enough and popular enough for lack of better word to stand alone and i miss the charm that we got from the sam raimi films because i feel like we don't have that now yeah I'm, i mean I'm... tom holland alone has the, the charm and the charisma but i just feel like the films as a whole I don't feel the way that I feel when I, as much as there's some cringy moments in these films, you know, it's a sign of the times again. I feel like we don't have that today. And I, and I, and I miss that. And I would love for that to come back. Yeah. If you look yeah. at, you know, his supporting cast, like he has a sick supporting cast and, and his row gallery is amazing. Oh like, yeah. You, one can, of the best. you can go for yeah. days with just Spider-Man and, and his, you know, his supporting cast. So like, sure. It's. I think it's know, my it's, favorite. It's my favorite road gallery. In in but, in the MCU. In the MCU. Okay. Oh, I was, I was like, gonna sound to, like. Uh, I don't want to say MCU in Marvel. I mean, yeah, in Marvel. Marvel. It's not. It's not just the movies because there's so much more that we haven't explored yet with, yeah. in Marvel. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, so far with what they've shown, you know, Spider Man has the best villains. Uh, oh, they're definitely. The most like, interesting. To yeah, and to me, like when I think of with within DC and and Marvel. The best rogue galleries, you got Batman in DC and you got Spider Man in the MC and in, in Marvel. You know, yeah, you yeah, know, totally. Rhino, Scorpion, Doc Ock, Venom, Carnage, um, Green Goblin, dude, Vulture. It, Vulture. It just Mysterio. it just goes. It literally Mysterio, goes. Mysterio, yeah. Mysterio, Mysterio, Sandman, like you know Sandman, yeah. Everything like I just think back to the animated series and the and the comics. The lizard. Lizard. Oh, it just yeah. dude, it just doesn't end and it's just there's so much they can do, and I love what Sony's doing, especially you know, making the Venom and uh, was it Morpheus? Uh, not Morpheus. Oh shit, Morpheus! We yeah. didn't even say that. Oh, no, uh, Mor- oh Morbius. 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 Morpheus is from fucking. Uh, yeah, because we. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's uh, Spider-Man goes into the Matrix. Yeah, the Matrix. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, like, real quick, real quick. I'm sorry. I like. I can't believe this just happened because I literally had a note. I can't believe I never. I didn't think this would come up. <laughs> Yo, hold on. Yeah, we're really we're really certified, everybody. Yeah. We're I, really holy shit, big so, time nerds. Okay, so <laughs> it, it's so funny that you guys are bringing this up. It's crazy. I, I I literally have this note. So okay, the movie came out in two thousand two. The Matrix came out in what nineteen ninety nine? Yeah, ninety eight ninety nine. 
you could tell how much of an impact the Matrix had yes. even in the Spider. So there's a scene where Spider Man is saving uh, this child from a burning building, right? And then you hear a scream, and it happens to be Green Goblin yeah. in like a towel or like a freaking I don't know blanket. Yeah, in like a blanket, like the old lady yeah. blanket. Yeah. So the Green Goblin throws his goblin batarangs at him and uh and spider-man like everything slows down Bro. bullet time and it like goes above him and he's like moving like this and nice like, phone like, word for the Matrix. all i want to bullet yeah, time yeah man and there you go it is what it is it's all i want to say is like maybe Matrix Matrix, yeah, you guys remember max pain max pain max wait what video max pain you guys game. remember max pain oh, you, you and i went to go see the movie on that Oh, the one with But Mark you remember Wahlberg? the video game when you could do bullet time whenever you wanted. Yes, I do remember the video game. I actually played that game. Um, but I'm just saying the Matrix. I know. Yeah, I'm sorry. That impact. was a very, very big sidetrack. I don't know. That just got me like my, I don't know. I was just like hyped that I, like, even today, I feel like the Matrix still has an impact on things. I know oh, this totally. has nothing to do with Spider-Man, but I'm just saying. The first time he yeah. uses his, it, it's when he uses his spider sense. That's when it goes into bullet time. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, then, so because it, it happened when he when he when Flash was going to kick his ass, and like it, it went it went really slow. Yeah, to the, you uh, saw the fly. fly the spin, yeah, you yeah, saw the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first time we okay. saw him use his spider sense. And I was yes. going to bring up earlier that you know, the scientist and when they were in the uh, the spider laboratory, she actually gave a definition for spider sense. Yep. Like yeah. they called it Spider Sense, and now in the MCU movies, like with the Tom Holland ones, they haven't they haven't given it a definition yet. They they don't know what it is. They call it Peter's Tingle, you know. Like they don't they don't even know what it is. <laughs> they, you know you know what I mean? Like they call it Peter's. Did they tingle. really call it Peter's Tingle. It, it's it, it's his Tingle. Remember? Uh, there's whatever no, it is. There's no way they call it Peter's. Dude, tingle. It, it's his. It's um. It is. Aunt May says it in his. It's the the Peter Tingle. I think I think he's right. You I are. Ma- it's right. the Peter Tingle. That's 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 what it's called. Yeah, and he's like May. Don't call it that. Yeah, don't. That's 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 Aunt what May, they that's don't what be they call, call it. it. The Tingle. All right. That's what they call it though, and it's weird. I mean, I know they're trying to make it funny, but it's like that's that's what they're trying to. They don't even explain what the spider sense is. It's just they like don't. Peter's Tingle. Um. So, you know, they actually explained what it was, and I wrote. I had a note down because I watched it earlier. It was like. She said it in like one sentence, you know, it was like, like you, it's the, these spiders have the ability to almost know what, what's happening to them. Almost yes. like a, uh, like a, like a premonition about what's about to happen. And, you know, they're going to see what's going to happen before it happens. And she gave like, a, I said it worse than that, but she gave a really concise, like two sentence answer about what, uh, you know, your spider sense is. And she's just like, essentially a spider sense. And like that, that, she defined the whole thing right there. Yep. And you know, now you know what it is. So when st- stuff slows down, and you understand what's happening. Peter's so I, I thought, I thought the movie did uh, this movie did a really amazing job, amazing yes. job at doing that. Yeah, way better than what yes. they're doing now. And to to, yes. to, tr- to backtrack a little bit, like Kev, for me, you know that scene where he's dodging those like those those flying knives, like batarangs. Like yeah. as a kid, that was one of the most like influential scenes in my childhood just to remember because like that we used to like play that out as kids like as stupid little scenes like playing imagination you know pretending to dodge like the batarangs so, like that was so cool and the other scene is you know when he senses the glider too and he slow-mo jumps backwards over like those things stick out in my memory and you know make such a big impact on what kind of stuff i want to see in these comic book films because sure. that is shit straight out of the comics. That is cool yeah. stuff, especially, you know, from the matrix, from comics, that is things that make comic book films what they are. And yeah. Spider-Man, you know, came out in 2002 and we spoke about, you know, fantastic four 2005 last week. And I felt like Spider-Man, which came out three years prior did a hell of a better job with those kind of special effects. Way stuff better, than they did way with better job. Four. Yeah, I definitely think it handled the it handled this the 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 core story of Spider Man and even better. the even the yeah. and the web slinging and stuff like it looked great for that time. Like it was beyond it great for what it, it really was. did, dude. I was you know I, dude, it didn't I, look I, fake. I, to me at all i watched you and i both watched fantastic four last night no- or i'm sorry we watched it we watched it last week <laughs> right and uh so we're very familiar <laughs> with how it looks and yeah. uh <laughs> we watched spider-man <laughs> today before we filmed the episode and i feel like that movie being three years you know before that time 
that shit had way better special effects. Hell, you hell know? yeah, yes. I mean, maybe they have more money. They were like, let's invest in Spider-Man. Let's do this. Um, you know, let's let's make that happen. But yeah, dude, that, that shit looks so good. It looks way better. And Spider-Man suit looked way better, too. It was, you know, that was one of my favorite Spider-Man suits. Just the oh, way, dude. It, just the way it looked, it was like literally straight from the comics but it looked real like it was a good combination of both and in 2002 that's wild to me that's like you know x-men was doing those just black straight up black jumpsuits and meanwhile you got spider-man who's doing a you know a comic accurate version of of his suit yeah dude we uh i actually have that as a note it's in bullet point it says uh spider-man outfit this is my favorite Spider-Man outfit. Yes, by like, far. You know, by far. It looks so good. I love the hard outlines on all yes. of the webs that that, ha- that go down. Um, it just like kind of defines everything. It makes it makes it look more. I don't know. I don't know what it, like. It makes it look more. Um, I don't know. Present in your yes. face. It doesn't look fake it, because they gave him like a practical outfit. It wasn't CGI. Um, they. It moved well. It looked well. It filmed well. Yes. You know, and it was not CGI at all. And like the the, sh- the outfit looked amazing. You know what I mean? Um, compared to, I mean, Andrew Garfield's. I feel like his was cool, but when he when when they were filming him in his suit, it looked a little weird. Like when it was CGI, it looked great, right? Yeah. It, it looked awesome. But um, you know, um, and and same for Tom Holland's too. I don't know. There's just something. Tom Holland's looks like a little bit basic to me. Um, his his one, but you know, obviously, you know, like what we just said, Tobey Maguire's Spider Man suit was amazing. It was yeah. the best one. I've never oh, seen anything like that before. Um, Kev, how do you feel about that? Like, w- you know, Ty and I, we both feel like Tobey Maguire's suit was the best yeah. one ever. How do you I'm feel? So about glad that? you brought this up too. Oh my god. Um, yeah, his suit is the is the best suit. I'm sorry, Spider Man should be red and blue. Yes, and that's it. Uh, this whole like. Nowadays, him having like black and red in his suit, I'm like, what the fuck? What's going on here? Spider-Man is, is one of the most iconic superheroes. I know we just talked about Ever. the most recognizable, probably Superman, but but I mean, Spider-Man, I, I, he, his suit is what it is. And why can't we just keep it the same? Um, I agree with you guys. Uh, the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man suit, hands down, is the best. They tried to change it in the, the Amazing Spider-Man, the first one. It was a little funky, and then they were like, ah, we're going to go back to the, to the traditional suit in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Suit was good. Movie was shit. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man suit, um, hands down the best. And I, I'm glad you brought that up. I think visually it, it looks the best too, yes. right? Um, I think so, man. Really I think so. crazy to it think It films about. really well. Yeah. It yes, films really films, well. Uh, yes, thank you films very it, well. I, I um, think it's because of the the like the dark outlines um on 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 his chest and like yes. on his suit you know like all all the spider webs it, are it, raised it's almost right? yeah it's raised a little bit so it yeah. gives it some more like texture and some more some more context when you're when you're when you're filming it yes. and you know it's not just like a flat stripe on there um yes which is more i mean that's fine you know if that's what you want to do but to make it pop on screen i feel like yeah the toby Maguire one that was that that shit looked really good yeah yeah, dude, that that was definitely hands down the best suit. Um, Which yeah. you know what, you guys, I want to bring up something. I saw it on Instagram. I don't know if this is true, and I got to look it up, but because this is really far back, but they're saying that somebody was saying that um, Spider Man was originally created with a black and red suit with blue highlights, and what? they did the blue highlights to just make it pop for comics, but over time it evolved. To being a blue and red suit. I know that. Interesting. So okay. I have to look that up. That's not confirmed. I'm not telling any of our listeners that that's confirmed, but I'm saying that that's what I saw. And, you know, that it was very interesting to me when I saw that because I didn't know that. Um, but it's something to bring up and something to look into. Ty, I'm sure you're looking into it right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of interesting, man. It reminds me of like, like, so what I if know- that's the case? What if that's the case? Yeah. I, what What if Spider Man is so, because that's why Tom Holland has the black and red suit. Well, then you know what? It's if supposed that, to but, be black. But if for, that's the case, then I'm gonna put my foot in my mouth. No, but but for me, like growing up from the animated, like that was what I grew up with. Sure. So even if 
you know, the original was red and black with a little bit of blue. Like, I grew up with that red and blue, and that's what I want to see. Like, to me, that's right. what Spider-Man is for me. Yeah, yeah, red, red and blue for sure. I mean, I agree 100%. I, I, I definitely agree it should be red and blue with, with some black trim or something. But, yeah, these people were saying, you know, it, it was supposed to be red and black. It was red and black, and it's, it's supposed to have blue trim. Only to contrast, so to not make him look so dark. It's a really good point. So I, when you said that, I literally the, the 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 comic that I thought in my mind was is one of the most iconic comic book covers, which is Amazing Fantasy. Yeah, and it's where Spider Man, and he even has the webs in between, like his like yeah, uh, oh his, yeah, like, bicep and armpit his, hair. So, yeah, but his webs. So, yeah, I'm looking up that image. And if you look, it's fucking black. It's, it's black fucking black. Blue highlights. Yeah, that's, so, that's what this is too. Yeah, black. With oh blue my god! So, so is this suit supposed to be red and black? And I just didn't know this. So whole fucking I'm time. an asshole. <laughs> See, but the thing is, like, for me, I th- that doesn't like change my opinion. You know? But, okay. Yeah. No, it doesn't change our opinion that blue looks better. But the original suit is red and black with blue trim. And only to, to make it stand out in the but comics. Is it but the thing is, is it blue trim or is it shadowed blue? That's the yeah, that's they the have it's shadow it because, like shadow, because because why, shadow blue. Why would yeah. the, the shadow be lighter blue and then the suit be dark? If he was if it right. was just a black suit, it would just be fully black. I don't know. Just to maybe make maybe make it pop more. Maybe just to make it um, you know but what artists it, are but, doing. But if you're being realistic, right? Like light. Right, if you have a black yeah. suit, you're not going to get blue from totally. a black suit. Yeah. So it's so just... for sure, for sure. So uh, I don't know. It's, it's all very fantasy, you know. This is all fantasy, yes. so uh, it's hard to. It is. It is interesting you're saying that because I'm looking at so like Todd McFarlane had a Spider-Man run too, right? And then if you look at his, you could interpret it as. It's red and blue, and then he just put black for where the shadows would be on his suit. Right. Yeah. So okay. Exactly. So I, I, that's I totally know. Todd McFarlane, though. <laughs> yeah, it's very Todd. It's so Todd. But you can, you uh, can it's so Todd. Argue. I know him personally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we went to high school with him. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I listen. I prefer the red and blue. I'm just gonna say it. I I, I do too. I do too. Yeah. But you know we're gonna be we're gonna be incorrect if we say that that was Spider Man's. You know that's his original suit. It's not. Yeah. We're wrong. Yeah. Dude, but so. I, I just like what you said, Mark. Just like the raised webbing on his suit just makes it look so much better. Like it, it's next to Tom Holland's suit, and which is yeah, next the, to, yeah. The lines know, are built into the suit, and it's not Garfield's, raised. You know, but his suit just like having it like built in made it look so much better. It, yeah. it popped. It popped a lot more. Yeah, oh, yeah. To- Toby Maguire, he, lo- he looked awesome in the suit. He looked awesome. And I think it was just uh, commending the costume designer. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Amazing, uh, for, amazing costume design. For making this sure. suit look the way it did. I think I'm wearing, like, um, Spider-Man colors on this thing. Workhorse Brewing Company <laughs> made right over here. There you go, man. Made right. Yo, you guys, we just fucking uncovered. A, we unlocked a whole new level. We <laughs> were just like, we blew each other's minds. We did. spider Man's uh, yeah. suit is supposed to be red and black. I, yeah. I feel like I have to like. That's insane. I, I don't even know. Like, what else? Who else is lying to me? I don't even know. <laughs> I, I'm questioning everything now. Well, you know what? You guys want to get to the end of the movie here? Let we want to wrap this up soon. Let's yeah, get to the end. Yeah, let's wrap so, this up. Okay. So they get to the bridge, right? And um, you know, Goblin has to make him choose between you know MJ dying or killing all the tram of little kids that are on there. By the way, there's not one adult. It's all little kids. All little kids. So, you know, kids. we have to, we have to, you know, we're, are you going to pick between killing these little kids? Or are you the, like the girl that you'd really, you know, you're not sure you like, you do like, you know, you don't, we don't know. She doesn't like you that much. Um, she's been with like five other guys before you, but you know, which one are you going to pick? Um, so, you know, and it's great that he, he went that way. I mean, Goblin, you know, he made him choose between, you know, are you going to be a hero? Or are you going to be selfish? Yeah, but and, but you gotta and, think about you gotta think about this, right? Which I laughed out loud watching this is the fact that the people on the bridge called out Goblin and said, "You're really gonna fuck this dude up who's trying to save children." 
Like, you're yeah. really going to go and try and hurt this guy who's literally <laughs> trying to save children. Like, to me, like... He was so funny. It, I was like, to me, like, you know, to get the seriousness of it, like, it, them, like, breaking the fourth wall and saying that about him, like... Yeah. That, that took away from me. Like, that... The, totally. Like, the impact of that scene kind of went away when they were calling him out for, like, being an asshole yeah. about trying to save him saving kids. And I'm like, they're right. <laughs> He's trying to save kids, and you're an asshole for, like, trying to ch- make him choose both. And now he, you know, he thwarted you, and he's saving both. But now you're trying to stab him from saving kids. And they're all, everyone in New York sees what you're doing and calls you and, out for it. Like that. And guess who he chose first? Mary he Jane He after Watson. Mary Jane first. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> Screw the kids. Fuck the kids. Let's, I'm going gonna, gonna to go did. save the girl that I'm not even going to end up being with anyways at the end of the movie. <laughs> You know, so uh, that shit was insane to me. Um, but yeah, you know, the, but but like if that was a great villain move, you know, yeah. save these children or save your girl. That was a pretty cool, like ultimatum. Um, you know, you got to make them choose. And, you know, he saved both. So that was that was cool, too. And, yeah. um, you know, Goblin kicked his ass for a, a solid few minutes. Yeah. Really, he really let him have it. You know, he he screwed up his whole his whole suit. He fucked his face up. Uh, his whole eye was torn off on one side. Yeah, yeah. Um, he really kicked his ass, and um, I started feeling bad for him. You know, because I was like, well, this is supposed to be a recently graduated high school kid, but I mean, Tobey Maguire looks forty seven. So <laughs> God, I don't I don't know. Like, do I should I be feeling bad for him? It's it's hard to say, you know. It, it it's you know, it's it's out it's out there for everybody. Yeah. But you know, trying to put myself in his position, this guy is like a college student. I'll I'll just say college student, right? We'll say college student, freshly college yeah. student, um, and he's getting his ass kicked, and I felt bad for him, you know. But um, he uh, he 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 pulled through. You're right. He uh. He thwarted Goblin for the first time, and yeah. that was that was really good. That was um, that was very exciting. He used his spider sense to get through it. Um, you know, we we talked about it before. <laughs> it, was, it was like it was very bullet timey, <laughs> bullet timey to get through. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, Kev, you you go ahead, man. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. I I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. You didn't cut me off. I was trying to find a bridge to be able to get to you. Okay. <laughs> You got to me, man. I'm here. I'm here right. for you. Thank you for picking me uh, up. I just wanted to say when you mentioned the 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 scene where uh, uh, like half of his mask was torn off. Another thing I want to commend Sam Raimi for is there's a lot of moments in this movie that are very. He made it feel like an actual real comic book. Yes. Yeah. Um, like there's so in particular that scene, the very end of the scene. Spoilers, by the way. Yeah, sorry guys. If you haven't yeah, watched shit. this movie yeah, from twenty years ago. <laughs> spoilers. Who has who, anybody hasn't seen it? In, you know, since two thousand two. Twenty um, years. Um. Yeah. So when Spider Man has half of his mask off, and he's like, also Toby did a lot of like the iconic Spider Man poses and yes. stuff. Um. So there's this. So when when uh Norman dies, right? Um. And then he dies. <laughs> spoilers, dude. Spoilers. <laughs> oh my god. Um. So we finished the movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I fell asleep, I fell asleep <laughs> before the end. I didn't oh. even finish the movie. God damn it! Yeah, he fucking dies, dude. Um, oh shit! Yeah, he like he totally dies, or he's, does he? He's fucking, he's out. Um, man. he's so, out. So, <laughs> so Spider Man's are like doing his iconic position and like puts his head down. Like moments like that, like to me, were like. Uh, like pages from a comic book. Yeah. Like it literally looked like there were so many different snapshots or illustrations that Sam Raimi decided to have in his movie that look like um, pages from the comic. Yeah. Sure. Like, like still images from the comic. Yeah. So that's another thing I commend him on is 100%. I feel like he, he really wanted it to feel like a, like even the dialogue as cheesy as it was a lot of the Spider-Man dialogue in the comics is very cheesy like spider like spider man's yeah. always like doing puns and shit like that and uh Gobby. a lot of it was 
yeah, Gobby. Gobby. Like, yeah, Gobby. Like, yeah. Like, 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 Goblin, what did you do? Like, all that kind of stuff is very cheesy Spider-Man dialogue, but I, I don't know. I, I have to I have to applaud him for for trying to capture that as much as possible. Yeah, dude. Um, if you dude, put yourself in Peter I Parker's shoes, that. you yeah. know, you put him if you put yourself in his shoes and you're you know, not only did Goblin come after, you know, your Aunt May, who's basically your mom, yeah. MJ, who is the love of your life, who you've loved yeah. since elementary school, but you never told her that you lived next to her until this movie, which was when you were a senior in high school about to graduate. Uh, she never knew you lived there. Uh, but anyway, so you loved her for that long. And, you know, he's, he, he's tried to hurt all these people. He's tried to kill all these people. And, you know, he, you still end up there. There's a moment there, you know, because he didn't even know that Norman was Green Goblin until he took off his mask. Yeah. yeah right. He true. didn't even know until the end. Yeah. And so, you know, that moment, what, what are you supposed to do? You're like, do I hurt this person and still take them in? Or, I mean, I don't even know that he was thinking about taking him to jail. He was just trying to survive the moment. Yeah. You know, he, he was, was just, just trying, trying to, to get out of there alive. Yeah. 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 And but also he probably also felt a lot of pain and hurt and wanted to hurt this person badly. And, you know, I'm going to I'm going to tie this into an earlier question, but also, you know, uh, this is where we're sticking. We don't have to get to the earlier one. But, you know, the guy who killed Uncle Ben when uh, in the you know, when they were in that warehouse on the top floor and, you know, the guy when he knew when he realized it was the guy that killed Uncle Ben, you know, and he had that look in his eye <laughs> like he was going to like he was going to push this guy out of the window or, you know, end his life because he did, he really disliked him. Um, the guy ended up just like being scared and tr- tripping over the, yeah. the thing on the floor and killing himself. But, you know, I mean, you could argue that he was going to murder this guy. He, he didn't know, but, but he didn't get the chance to do that. Sure. And now he's in the same position with somebody who, he trusted, he knew, and he loved, I mean, uh, essentially, I, I feel like he loved him a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, because he was a father figure to him. Sure. And it, it, it was just, um, it was very complicated, and it was very, it was a tough choice. But, you know, I mean, he didn't even want to kill him. He just, Goblin was going to kill him. So, yeah. you know, yeah, he was, just, was all he him. did was just react. It all he did was react. Killed. It was he jumped out of the way, um, you know, but there was that moment when he was punching, him, he was punching, he was punching him and you don't know where it's going to stop. Right. Like, do does Spider-Man learn in that moment? Because that was in the beginning of it. Like, I ever do, see do not do you have to, like, give mercy to, to, to some people? You know, he, he uh, like I said, he was going in him. He was going in. He was punching him. He's punched him. And then he said, stop, Peter, please. You know, like and, and it, it kind of it jolted him out of that, that moment, you know, but, um, you know, that happened. And then, so what do you do in that moment? So can I, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to interject. Please because, interject. Because at that moment, right. I don't see Peter killing him because a, the whole time he's punching a mask. What is a mask going to do? If you're wearing a mask and someone's punching a mask, you're punching a mask. You're not hurting someone there. You're not hitting skin to skin. You know, it doesn't hurt. You know, you're just hitting someone. Peter's punches, I'm sure, are like cinder blocks. Yes, but he's literally (laughs) wearing a a metal face mask to protect himself. So it's not like it's doing too much damage. It's not like he was going to his face and hitting him. Like, to me, that took me out. Like, I'm like, okay, this is like a football player punching another football player in the face when they have a mask on or when they have the helmet on. Like, what is this? What is this doing? This does nothing for me. It's a wash for you, yeah. Exactly. So, like, I'm like, what is this doing? Nothing. Like, to me... That didn't cross my mind because at the end of the day he was punching this dude's mask, and it and it didn't it didn't phase me. So like, the one like you said the one moment when he was like facing the guy who killed his uncle, that that was a moment of will he kill this guy or not? And obviously what happened he tripped and fell. But the whole I wanted to ask you guys that though like you know what I mean like did he do you think he he killed him, or did the guy kill himself I on think, accident? I think the guy killed himself on accident. Oh totally you think so. Yeah. But yeah, he yeah. wouldn't have been so scared to do that unless he was afraid of what the, you know Peter would do. Yes, thousand percent. Because he started backing up. Yes. Um, yes. So I mean, 
that's a very interesting question, right? Like, does sure. did Peter Parker kill him, or did the guy kill himself? Uh, it's it's hard to yeah. say. I mean, there's you can argue against both sides, and I think that both would be right. I I I think that based off of him tripping over that pipe or yes. whatever it was, so he. That's very, that's, that's very theory. like, you know, like, end of the rope though, Kevin, you, you know, can, you know what I mean? Add, like you can add that. Yes. Peter he was, did kill himself. Well, yes. He did kill himself. Peter did not kill him, but Peter was ready to kill him. But if this guy did not do that and it was at the moment that Peter decided, like, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to be that kind of person. That's what I think. Yes. That's exactly what I think. But you can also you argue know what I mean? that you can also yes. argue that Peter was defending himself because the man had a gun on him, too. That's Yeah, exactly. That, so, too. Ty, I'm so happy you said that because I wrote that shit down, too. Like, dude, exactly. Like, <laughs> even if Peter did kill him, it's in self-defense because that guy pulled a gun on him first. Yes. Yeah. So did they write? Yeah, you know, you're right. Both of you guys are right. I mean, everybody's right. I just yeah. was curious to see how you both felt. Yeah, I mean, factually, the the, the guy killed himself. Not, yeah. not like not like committing suicide. Wise, he he just he was he was taken back. He was scared. There happened to be a pipe sticking out of the ground. He tripped, fell out the window. A perfectly that's placed it. ninety degree pipe where you're exactly. in triple. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> but you're right. I think that was a moment for Peter where sure the 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 rage, like he saw red, right? So yeah. he ultimately was like, I need to end this guy because he killed my uncle. But I think that happening and realizing what he he could have crossed a path that I think he ultimately realized I don't want to yes. go down that road. Um yeah. is what made him go down the the you know the the, the road of wearing uh of norman osborne red, yeah red and yeah. blue tights it's not black it's blue uh red and blue tights <laughs> and uh saving new york yeah him and Nor him and norman weren't that far off that's what i mean i, like, I don't like, think that and you know I, I didn't bring it up earlier but they had that conversation on the roof when peter was knocked out with the gas and he was sure. paralyzed and norman was on the roof and he was trying to tell him, hey, you and me are the same. He even yeah. hit him. He's like, hey, you and me, we're the same. Um, you know, yep. we, we we just chose different paths. And, you know, people are telling you that you are not what you think you are. JJJ was telling him all the time, no, you're bad. I, uh, Spider-Man sucks. Spider-Man is over here to help, and he's going to destroy the city and all this yep. and that. And you can see for a moment on, on this, on you know, when they were talking to each other that Peter – was looking at him and he was like, I think you're right for yeah. a second, for a second. I think he thought about it. I think he thought about it because, you know, it, until he started terrorizing his world and all that stuff. But there was that moment. And I love that moment that, you know, Goblin was talking to him and he was trying to get him to see things the way that he saw them. Goblin was saying we're the same. We just took different paths. And, you know, he, it, it was actually like, it was brilliant. I thought I, I, it was really cool to see that happen. Uh, he, he really tried to get him to see it from things from his way. Yeah. I just think it adds to Sam Raimi. And I think there was a lot of, even though there were some moments in the, in the film that we pointed out that were sort of like, eh, um, there were some things that he did that I thought were very, um, that were shiny moments Yeah, for lack of a better yeah. word. I it, think so too. In this right. film. So, so, so to wrap it up, out of five, Kev, what would you rate this film? Wow, um, shit! Uh, <laughs> oh my god, do it now! So it, do it now! So it's so tough because no. I mean, like <laughs> comparing it to like what we have nowadays, or do I compare it to like to nowadays? Compare it to, to nowadays. Now. Today. Yeah, if this movie came out on Friday and we're reviewing it on Sunday, what would you oh, do? Oh Jesus! Okay, and out of ten, you said five. No, out of five. Out of five. Oh, uh, uh, we're talking about replayability. Talking about um, how does it impact you uh, emotionally? Uh, does that story make sense? Do you like the characters? Do you like the writing? Okay. How do you? How do you? How do you? You know, rate that. Um, kind of I am going to say, you know what? I, I'm going to give it a three out of five. Okay. 
uh, because yeah. I, I feel like this is a film that I have I've actually rewatched a lot in my lifetime. And hey, maybe that's just due to like the whole nostalgic factor of it. But there's a charm, like I know I keep saying it, but there's a charm, and there's something, there's something about this Sam Raimi Spider Man, his take on Spider Man, that hits me a certain way that the other films honestly have not. Um, so for me, I think it's a three out of five. All right, Marcus, yeah. what are you writing it? You're really cutting me deep right now. Um, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. Um, I I think that, you know, when I watched it a little while ago, and it was only a few hours ago, um, it, it really resonated with me. I really had a good time with it. Um, is it perfect? No. But I, I really enjoyed uh the way that sam raimi you know directs his movies i really like you know he did evil dead which is i mean i i love i love so much uh, so there's a very wide variety of his work that i love and you know i just like him as a director i think he does really good job and um i think he did a very solid job at telling a spider-man story and i don't know how much of the studio was involved with you know pulling or adding to his story but um, what he did and what he released, I think that I respect a lot. Uh, the score is amazing. Uh, the character characters were amazing. Uh, the development was amazing. Tobey Maguire, I believed him in the beginning. He didn't have powers. The end, he did. He's Spider-Man at the end. And I believe that transformation from the beginning to the end. Um, so, you know, 3.5 for sure. Yeah, I agree. I would give this a 3.5 out of 5. I, you know, nostalgic reasons... The, the character arcs between, you know, Spider-Man and Peter Parker and even Oz and Norman Osborn. You know, I, I loved his character arc and it was believable for Norman. I could see why he went down the path that he did. And as we've said in this episode, you know, they weren't far off from going down different paths, both of them. Yeah, and I think absolutely. that was cool. I think that was a really cool aspect of this film. You know, as much as, you know, I love the the costume designs. I loved the fight scenes, the animations, the matrix style dodging of, of the batarangs, the goblin orangs. We can say it was, it was just, it was a fun film. It, you know, I don't think it matches up with the stuff we've seen in the MCU, but again, I think for its time, it was a fantastic movie, especially as a kid. It was incredible. Watching, yes. As a kid watching that and then seeing the animated series, then seeing that live action, like my, I was my interest was peaked. I loved every bit of it as a kid, and I didn't disappoint. You know, and we speak about you know Mar- you know Kev, you said about the corniness, but after watching Fantastic Four and then going to going to Spider Man, Fantastic Four was a shit ton more cornier than Spider Man, so it didn't even <laughs> phase me when I watched this Spider Man. <laughs> that was um, a train wreck compared yeah. to this movie. <laughs> but uh, for all of you listening and watching, give us your thoughts on Spider Man, the 2002 film from Sam Raimi. You know, you heard our thoughts. Give us yours. Thank you all for listening and watching. And Kevin Marcus, as always, it's a pleasure and it's an honor. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Cheers, my dudes.